Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, I wanted to talk about something I think it's pretty cool. I have this laptop laying around this Dell Latitude. I'm hoping that I pronounce it correctly. So they have made these things for a very long time. I don't know if they're even making them now, but the Dell Latitude is a laptop you can buy for not a lot of money, especially when it comes to this version. My version is not in the best condition. I must say that my laptop battery is still working though, so that is not a problem. The main problem is like my keyboard is, oh man, it's just completely messed up. The locking mechanism is also, <laughs> is also broken off. This shift key is broken. So if you just want to sell something like this, it is unsellable or basically nobody wants to have it. So I was thinking we can do something pretty cool with this. Because the battery is still alive and the display itself, it still works. So I was thinking what we can do with it. Why not make a portable retro arcade machine of this? You can do a lot of great things with this Dell laptop. It's a dual core, it's got a 4 gigs of RAM. There is no hard drive installed, but we can slap a hard drive and SSD in it. It got in built in speakers. But in the end, if you're looking at the specs, I was thinking, hey, why not installing Bodocera? And let's play some retro games on the go. Because now we're having a device that basically has the display, we have a controller that we're using external, and we're having some speakers. The display itself is not the highest resolution, and also it's a 15 inch if I'm saying it correctly. But I was thinking, for retro games, it's more than enough. And if you're just on the go, and you want to bring all your games with you, this may be a really cool way. So let's talk about the Bodoshira. And let's see what we're going to get with this when it comes to emulation performance. Okay, but this is not a tutorial, but what I wanted to tell you is like the ways we can play. We can use an external hard drive, 2.5 inch or in 3.5, they are really cheap and they're having big capacities. Another thing is we can use a thumb drive. This is a very small one from SanDisk, but you also can get yourself a bigger one. That one is maybe cheaper. And the last option what we're going to get is a CF card because some of these devices has the option to boot from a CF card. Maybe it sounds crazy, but these are just the three ways. And of course you can use this thing in combination with a card reader. So this is what you can do, but there is also another way. And the reason why I will explain you. This laptop has a lot of options when it comes to audio out and other devices. So to begin with, we can have the option to use a headphone on this device but also external speakers and we're having two USB port at the right for using the controllers. Of course, if you want to use four controllers, you can always use a USB hub. Over here at the left, we're going to get the Ethernet connection, the RG45. So if you want to hook it up to the internet, it is possible. And what we can try, of course, to use the display out. It would be cool basically to clone the extra display and connect it to an external monitor. But there's no way I want to point out because this is a portable video, of course. And then we're having the input for the power supply. But with this system, we have a problem. We're only having a really old school 2.0 USB ports like this one. There is no 3.0. So the only option, in my opinion, we're going to have is using an internal hard drive. And guess what? It was already missing in the first place. So that's what we're going to do. So with the Dell Latitude, the only thing that we need to do is slide in the hard drive with the Bordosera firmware on it. And we're ready to go. So let's boot it up and let's see what we can do with this bad boy. If you want to use a dual boot, that is of course possible, even in combination with an external drive that we're not going to recommend doing with this device due of the old USB connection. Okay, so I replaced it. The only thing I need to do is boot it up. If you have any issues, you can always go to the configuration system. Uh, yeah, that's it. Nevertheless, let's boot it up. Let's get some Linux bottles here running on this device and let's have some fun. Oh, damn it, the battery's low. Did it charge it enough? I'm set. Let's go. <gasps> I messed it up. All right, so the system is booting up. Everything works like a charm. Just doing a quick overview of the Bodocera software, what you can do with it. And of course, let's test some games and let's see how far we can push this old bad boy. So in this video, I am going to use myself the Chinese controller I've got for the Super Console X. But he also can use like an Xbox 360 controller. There are a lot of the great controllers you can use with Bodocera. So let's plug in this bad boy and let's see what we're going to get. All right, so I'm using this for the first time or this controller on this image. So what we need to do is configure it. So if everything goes like it should be, you're going to get this configure input. The reason why, because you need to set it all up. 
what you're going to get is basically this setup list. It says what kind of button you need to configure. Now we're going to have the D-pad, for example, up, down, left, right. Start select. Now I choose A, B, X, Y. We're having the analog stick. Let's check the shoulder buttons, the buttons here, and of course set the hotkey if we want to go back to the menu. I'm pressing back for this. Press A. It will take some time, but when you're done, you can control is configured with every single emulator. The device you see over here, it's not an IPS, very high definition, full HD 4K display. This is just a really old school retro way. And maybe even we can disable the bezels if we want to. Not going to do that in a video, just going to leave as is. But for an old school 15 inch display, non IPS, doesn't look that bad. So when it comes to a really old piece of technology, I'm going to tell you and will surprise you in many ways because this device is capable of running a lot of stuff that I even didn't even realize. What I do like about this is that we have the option to bring this thing with you. You even have the indication of the battery in the right top corner. I did review a lot of these devices, especially when it comes to Pandora's Box Pi based, but this is just a super easy way. You grab yourself an old laptop, maybe you have one laying around, you're going to do a modification of the software, or better said, you're going to slap on a new hard drive, and you're ready to go, and you have so much stuff you can add to it. The old stuff, like 8-bit things, but I will show you, it wouldn't just fine. Arcade, same story. But when it comes to the high performance stuff, PlayStation 1 and 64, this is what I wanted to see and just to check out what you're going to get. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay guys, so first a little bit of beefcake and wolfies. And this is how I feel in the morning. Just kick him in the balls. Kick him in the face, kick him in the balls. Kick him in the face, kick him in the balls. Beefcake. Cake. <laughs> I hate these guys, you know. Go, oh, go away. Okay, guys. So first up, let's try some PlayStation. I'm just going to skip all the old stuff because it runs just fine. Get into the bubble. <laughs> crash, crash, crash. Oh, do shut up. But the thing is with PlayStation 1, okay, it runs on a lot of cheap Android devices nowadays. But it is a great addition. And I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but the sound of this Dell Attitude lab is very good. Of course, there is no bass, but when you're cranking it up to, let's say, 100%, it's going to get a little bit too pitchy. Talking to my goat friend. Okay guys, the next up, PlayStation Portable. So a lot of these Pandora's boxes and all a lot of cheap stuff doesn't work at all with PlayStation Portable. So let's play without frame skip, original settings. I can already hear a minor, a minor dip. So far so good. Of course, like when you're looking at the Tekken 6 game, this is not the most demanding game out there. Sadly, I couldn't get God of War to work because that will be like the ultimate test. But so far so good. Next up, let's try a different game, different system. This is a really demanding game, so I'm curious how this will work out. I'm getting my ass kicked here. The first time putting up the game, I have a lot of problems due of 
FPS dips, but when playing through the game, it should be working just fine. It's all still running 100% perfect speed, but it is better playable than most, let's say, cheap Android boxes. Okay, so I wanted to try out a Sega Saturn game. Really, my God, this system is really demanding. I know, like some other devices, it does have the option to run with low specs Sega two-dimensional games, but this is, of course, not like it should be. And the two-dimensional stuff isn't that, it's not really demanding. So if this doesn't even run, forget about PlayStation 2, forget about Nintendo GameCube. I can say that PlayStation Portable, a second Dreamcast, is pushing this device to the limit. We just need to have some better specifications. Alright, next up. N64, Cruising USA, a game that doesn't run on a Pi, maybe now, but back in the day I tested it out, it had a lot of issues, especially with this part. And see, even on the old school dual core, it runs like a charm. No hiccups, nothing. So is this the ultimate retro arcade machine? Destroyer, whatever you want to call this, emulation beast? The thing is like, I just wanted to show you what is capable when having an old laptop laying around like me. I didn't use it and I think this is pretty cool. So if you go on vacation and you want to bring some games with you, how convenient is this? You have everything. You have a monitor, you have speakers and just slap in some extra controllers and you are ready to go. And the monitor itself, it's not that bad at all. The keyboard, that is something that we're not going to need. So that would not be a problem at all. But in my case, there is only one key. The shift key is broken. So basically I can still use the keyboard if I want to.